Welcome to Atlantic Business Magazine's Take 5 with the Top 50 Video Series. I'm Kiri Riddle, partner at Grant Thornton here in Newfoundland and Labrador and a presenting sponsor with the Top 50 CEO Awards. I'm joined today by first-time Top 50 CEO Award winner, the president and CEO of Genesis Group, Michelle Sims. Since 2016, Michelle has realigned Genesis operations and programming to help build amazing companies while renewing its focus on strategic thinking and strategic execution. The results are a staff and client base that have tripled in size, a 30% budget increase, and four new or expanded programs. I'm so excited to be here with you today, Michelle, so let's get started. So what was the biggest risk you've taken in your career? What was the result? I think hands down, the biggest risk I've uh, taken in my career was to take on the role of president and CEO of Genesis. Uh, in early 2016, I left Genesis to take a position, a leadership position with the Business Development Bank of Canada. And uh, it was an exciting new opportunity for me. I had been with Genesis for uh, probably a little over 15 years. And, um, you know, it was a bit nerve wracking to think that uh, I would leave that opportunity and go into a position, a CEO position that uh, I wasn't really entirely sure that I would be able to handle with a three-year-old and a seven-year-old at home and uh, a husband who had a pretty progressive career as well. And uh, so from, from my perspective, you know, it made me uneasy and uncomfortable. And uh, also that used to make me angry that I was uneasy and uncomfortable about taking uh, an opportunity like that uh, uh, and you know recognizing that a lot of women uh, when given those opportunities decide to not take them because it makes them uncomfortable and uh, so I sort of hid away for a couple of days on my own I wanted to make sure that if I was making the decision to take on the role of CEO that it was a decision that was mine and mine alone uh, and I wanted to make sure that, uh, you know, I was uh, going to be able to put all the tools in place needed to uh, be successful in the role. And I have to say, I was incredibly blessed with a number of mentors who advised and guided me through the first couple of years of being uh, in the role of CEO, uh, some inside of the university and some outside of the university in the private sector. And so, uh, you, you know, those relationships and those people, I think, will, I, I will hold uh, dear for the rest of my life because they really did help uh, immensely uh, help me transition into the role of CEO. So you're in a very unusual situation, leading a not-for-profit organization that's in the business of building amazing companies. How does someone who is literally prohibited from making a profit develop an entrepreneurial mindset for your own organization and instill that mindset in others? Well, I'm an entrepreneur at heart. Um, entrepreneurship runs deep in my family, about three generations uh, of entrepreneurs. And uh, when I look around the, the virtual boardroom table these days at Genesis, but when I look around the boardroom table at the colleagues that I have uh, and the team that I have at Genesis, they're all entrepreneurs at heart. They're all people who are incredibly passionate about their community, about making the world a better place and about the economy of Newfoundland and Labrador. Um, they're all people who are, uh, you know, who drive every day to make Genesis better. Uh, and, you know, when I think about that, I think that's the trait of entrepreneurs. I'm very happy to say that a number of the people on, on staff at Genesis, probably about a third of the people on staff at Genesis have their own businesses as well on the side. Uh, and that's something that um, I, you know, I, I really appreciate. And I think it, it is a good thing for Genesis. I think it's, uh, it's great when they go talk to a client uh, that they understand uh, the position that the client is in. They understand, uh, you know, how important making payroll is and they understand how important it is to have that runway to grow the business or to, you know, make the, the sales. And, and I think uh, as a result, our team works harder and pushes harder uh, because of that. So, you know, while many of us are not entrepreneurs, I think everyone on the team at Genesis is intrapreneurs. And uh, I think that's the culture we've built and certainly the mindset that we've created uh, around the table. 
What do you see as the most profitable opportunities for emerging businesses and what can aspire entrepreneurs to take advantage of those opportunities? So as we've just seen in the last 12 months, COVID-19 has had a dramatic impact on the uh, ba basically every industry on the planet from home care to education to um, you know how elections are run to um, you name it, really grocery shopping has changed. How we go to restaurants and interact with people has changed. And I think uh, as a result of COVID-19, we're going to see a rapid acceleration of uh, economic activity uh, once we come out of uh, the pandemic. And I think that is going to have uh, immense opportunities or present immense opportunities to entrepreneurs. And I think entrepreneurial people should be uh, looking at that and looking right now at those industries, looking at tourism, looking at uh, you know the fishery and looking at um, long-term care uh, facilities and how they're how they're run and you know uh, what opportunities exist, how restaurants operate and how we can uh, make sort of a digital transformation of some of those industries going forward. I think uh, there is going to be an incredible opportunity coming out of this, and I really do think it's going to happen fast. Uh, we've seen in the last 12 months how fast we've all adapted to new technologies. Um, you know, teachers who never used Google Meet, uh, it's it's now how they interact with their classrooms and um, restaurant owners who had never uh, worked in the digital space before is now how they sell products to their and, and meals to their customers. Uh, and so I think that with the, within the next five to 10 years, we're going to see a rapid transformation of um, of digital products and, and tools and technologies. And uh, it is going to impact our economy in a good way, I think. Uh, and also it is going to have a, uh, a tremendous impact on entrepreneurs as well. You are known for being a people person, but you're also passionate about technology. Would you describe these characteristics as contradictory or complementary? Well, certainly the two characteristics are not mutually exclusive. Uh, and I've been in the technology sector for about 20 years now, and I will say that perhaps some of the most passionate people I've ever met in my life have come from the technology sector. And uh, not only are they passionate about their products and services, uh, but I would say they're incredibly passionate about the people that work with them. Uh, they and that really is the essence of most of the tech companies and and their businesses is the people. And that's evident when you walk in the door and you can see how they treat their employees, uh, how you know vacation is uh, is handled with their employee base, uh, how they feed them uh, during lunch. Most tech companies in the city provide lunch uh, now virtual lunch to their uh, to their teams. Um, they are very focused on uh, ensuring that the or that the employees sorry have a um, a, a really great workspace to work from that they have um, you know, passion projects that they can, uh, can work towards and that they're also working on something that is greater than, uh, than them. Uh, so for, for example, we have uh, clients and graduates at Genesis that are working on food insecurity issues, that are working on climate change issues, uh, that are working on human trafficking and financial fraud and money laundering issues, that are looking after uh, the safety of people at sea. So these, uh, things actually make people passionate. When you can say, you know, I go to work every single day to make life at sea safer, uh, that actually means something to people. And they, uh, whether they're extroverted or introverted, um, those people are very passionate about saving and supporting and nurturing and uh, creating a culture of uh, supporting other people. You lead through strategic engagement. What does that mean? 
Well, so strategic engagement from my perspective uh, is is critical to the success of Genesis. Um, you know, as a CEO, I am tasked with um, writing and uh, and providing the strategic plan for the organization. And, uh, you know, the board of directors looks to me to pull that uh, information together and put that plan together. Um, I have an incredible team at Genesis and people that I am super proud to be working with every single day. And I want their input. And uh, sometimes, you know, I perhaps ask for it too much, but I believe that they should have a voice in the development of the strategic plan. I have an incredible board of directors at Genesis, people who volunteer their time to give back to our organization so that we can help build amazing companies. I want to hear their, their thoughts. I want their voices. Uh, and, you know, we have a, a tremendous amount of stakeholders uh, at Genesis, people you know, every, everything from investors to the university community to um, strategic partners to service providers. I want to hear their input and thoughts on how we can grow uh, the entrepreneurial community, how we can grow the technology community. And I think it's it, it's that it sort of strategic engagement that allows Genesis and enables Genesis to collect all those voices, to hear from all those people, and then ultimately to make the right decisions about where and, and how we go forward uh, and what that strategy looks like. And so for me and from my perspective, uh, strategic engagement is, is critical to the success of our organization.